tears, I'ma never say die this year. To make it to the final four, push it to the limit. To make it to the final four, come on, the final four. let's go. The final four. Inside college basketball. basketball. The city of Richmond recently it's been an NCAA men's hoops hotbed but tonight the city hosts an inner city rivalry that gives you a bunch of black and blues. One team is on a 13 game winning streak while the other team is trying to assert itself to the top echelon in league play. Get ready for end to end action as the black and blue classic continues tonight. Presented in HD by LG. Boy, did something special happen in Philadelphia last night. It shook up the A-10 standings. Not only with St. Joseph's losing to St. Bonaventure, but also LaSalle upsetting the Butler Bulldogs. Where are we here at the Robbins Center? Well, we are courtside. We have the premier seats for tonight's ball game between VCU and Richmond, along with Pete Gillen, whose first victory as the head coach of Virginia was right here at the Robbins Center against VCU. I'm Tom McCarthy. What a special year this has been for the A-10. A terrific year, Tom. Great teams in a conference. you got to have your A game ready every night if you want to win. Well, some of the particulars for tonight's ball game feature two of the top scorers in the Atlantic 10. They're pretty special. Travion Graham is a scoring machine. I think he's the player of the year in the A-10 right now at this stage of the season. He's got an excellent mid-range game. He can knock down a three-point shot. He's got terrific range. He's also a tremendous offensive rebound. He goes to the glass. He's strong. He's got a lot of energy. He's really a special player. He's very tough to defend him. Darian Brothers is a fabulous shooting guard for Richmond. He had 39 points, Tom, in their last game over Charlotte. He knocked down eight three-point shots. He's a terrific player. All right, let's talk about Styles, Pete, for the Richmond Spiders offense, brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. It's our eye tracker. Richmond has a version of the Princeton offense. They bring everybody away from the basket. They got back doors, Tom, all over the court. Here we have it on the baseline. They shoot a ton of threes. They really try to control the tempo of the game. That's reminiscent of Gabe Lewis of the Princeton Tigers against UCLA back in the 90s in the NCAA tournament. It's VCU and Richmond. It's the Black and blue classic and the tip is coming up next. Seventy five years of NCAA March Madness presented by Buick. UCLA faced Michigan in the 1965 National Championship game with only two starters returning from John Wooden's defending champion squad. Senior guard Gail Goodrich set a UCLA record, scoring 42 points and leading the Bruins over the Wolverines for their second consecutive title. Go to NCAA.com slash March Madness and vote for the all-time March Madness players, teams, and moments. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. With one phone call, you'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. It's a free service, so call now. 800-241-5065. 800-241-5065. So has anybody actually started saving for college yet? <laughs> oh, not me. <laughs> no, no, you got time. <laughs> oh, no, we yeah. actually started. Yeah, but how did you even know where to start? Oh, I found out about the Gerber Life College Plan. Call now and get started with free information on the Gerber Life College Plan. Oh, it's a life insurance policy, too. Oh, that's different. It's uh, pretty much where I agree. <laughs> no matter what happens, we get guaranteed safe growth. We've got to get started. Call 1-800-313-0419 for your free information.
Hello, friend. I'm Pat Boone. Are you dreaming of an ideal retirement? Well, if you're 62 or older, there's a smart and easy way to get the money to make it happen. A reverse mortgage from my friends at Security One Lending, a national leader in reverse mortgages. They can help you turn the equity in your home into tax-free cash. Call to get this free, no-obligation information kit, which includes an educational video and the top 10 things to know about reverse mortgages. Why don't you call now? College basketball on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by 5-Hour Energy, what will you do in five hours? All is quiet at Monument Park in Richmond, Virginia. Not the same here at the Robbins Center on the campus of the University of Richmond, where it is a sold-out crowd getting set to watch VCU, led by Shaka Smart, who is one of the best young coaches in America. His fourth year at VCU, he's already won 100 games. And you want to talk about a guy that has energy? He has energy. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's ballgame. We'll begin with VCU. And they have some talent across the board. Now, Darius Theus, he's the senior guard. He's the leader of this team. We talked so much about Travion Graham, but it's Theus who will take the last shot at the end of a ball game. Graham is just special. He's a hybrid. He's the perfect guy for this VCU offense. Meanwhile, for the Richmond Spiders, Darian Brothers, 39 points in his last ball game. He'll be in the backcourt with Cedric Lindsay. There's some youth also for the Richmond Spiders in Taylor and Nelson Adota, but they are coming of age very quickly. Chris Mooney, well, you want to talk about being young and being successful. The former Princeton University product is certainly that. He has done a fabulous job in his eighth year here at Richmond. Overall, he's won 140 ball games. Yep, it is sold out tonight. VCU will be in the road black, Richmond in the home white. The officials for tonight's game, Michael Roberts, Dwayne Gladden, and Sean Hall. There's a story behind those three guys, which we'll get to as the night moves on. But first, it's Dwayne Gladden, who normally is the tallest guy on the floor. He'll walk to center court and get this baby started. It is the 67th version of the Black and Blue Classic. But Pete Dillon, it's the first time in 12 years these two teams are facing each other as conference rivals. Added the intensity and the importance of the game, Tom. It's a bigger game than ever. Man-to-man -man defense for VCU. You probably won't see anything else. Nelson Adota goes outside for Robbins to the free throw line. And then the three-pointer from the corner. Good! And that is exactly what Richmond needs from the freshman Taylor. They need to get shots to go down early. They live and die with the three, Tom. They don't have a great inside presence, but they're terrific from downtown. Theus running the point, covered up top by Darian Brothers. Man-to-man -man defense, kind of a matchup defense for Richmond. Exactly, Tom. It's a matchup zone. It has principles of a man-to-man -man and principle of the zone. It's like a switching, sagging man-to-man -man defense. Foul right away against the Spiders. It'll go against Dion Tower, the freshman. And to the free throw line is Javante Reddick. 68% from the line. Well, Chris Moody uh, has talked about getting off to a good start and just being composed from start to finish against this VCU havoc defense that they have. Exactly. The tempo of the game, Tom, is crucial. Which team is going to put their imprint on the game? Richmond wants to play slow, methodical, have a game in the 60s because they don't have the athletes and the depth of VCU. VCU wants havoc. A lot of tempo, up and down, chucking and ducking, heaving and leaving. So which team is going to grab the game by the throat early? The officials uh, are pausing momentarily. Uh, before Reddick goes back to the free throw line for his second shot. Reddick has made one as a team. Uh, BCU 66% from the free throw line. And if he can make the shot, BCU can get into their full court pressure D. But he does make the shot. Now we will see from time to time, Pete, we haven't seen it yet, Richmond huddling up because they want to make sure that they understand what play Greg Robbins wants to run on an inbound. And they also want to stay composed. So they feel like by huddling up, 
they can calm each other down. Exactly. And they just barely get it across midcourt. Nope, it's a 10 second violation. It was a late whistle by Sean Hall, but his intentions were there. VCU leads the country, Tom, as you know, in creating turnovers. They create 21 turnovers by their opponent, which is outstanding. Put that in perspective, Pete. How hard is it to average 21 forced turnovers a game? It's unbelievable. It reminds me of the old Georgetown teams of Coach John Thompson. With great athletes, tremendous pressure. They don't have an Alonzo Mourning or a Patrick Ewing, but they got everything else. Well, Richmond is slowing down VCU for the moment. Here's Graham, high post, but a foul is called away from the ball. That'll give us a chance, Pete, to go over the keys to tonight's ball game. All right, well, the keys right now that are very, very important for uh, VCU, speed up the tempo. They have great athletes, a lot of depth, and knock down shots early. For Richmond, limit turnovers, take care of the ball, remain patient on offense. Play the game at your speed, at your tempo, which means slow, slow, slow. Well, here's Lindsay running the point. Breaks the press, brothers from the corner, no good. And the uh, rebound is pulled down by VCU. Oh, a steal by Nelson Adono. Five to Richmond on top. Brandon Bird trying to settle the VCU offense back down. Theus has it in front of uh, midcourt. Theus is the leader on the floor. He's the leader off the floor. He's the heart and soul of their team, Tom. He's the first recruit for Shaka Smart. Shot clock down to 10. Graham for three. No good. Offensive board pulled down by Reddick. Can't get the bunny to go down. And the loose ball will be taken out by the Rams, but nearly a steal by Brothers. And they're diving every which way, and it's a kickball called against Theus. This game means an awful lot to both teams, Tom. Great steal by Nelson Adoda. Look at that. Boom. Send it home, young guy. Picked his pocket. That doesn't happen too often to Travion Graham. Well, it's good anticipation, too, by Nelson Adoda. So 5-2, Richmond on top. Three-point lead. Two and a half minutes gone by here in the first half. We're going to try to put VCU to sleep. Nice and slow, methodical. It'll take an open three or a layup. No hurry. Brothers covered out front by Brandon Burt. Taylor with the runner. It was a tough runner. He gets his own board, and he's fouled going up. How about the freshman for Richmond, Tom? Deion Taylor, young freshman, and Nelson Adoda, who is a redshirt freshman. Uh, unbelievable. Nice drive. He's in there strong. No screen out. You got to box out, VCU. They're ready to go, Tom. They're in the traction's on, and let's go. <laughs> Well, Taylor hasn't practiced the last couple of days because he's had a sore back. Now, he did go through some of the walkthrough today. They felt like he just needed to stay off the floor and not take a pounding. And obviously, early on, he has four points, and he's feeling pretty good about himself as Briante Weber, the sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia, checks into the ballgame for the first time. I call him Mr. Havoc. He had 10 steals in one game, Tom, which is unbelievable. Well, you said he's one of the fastest players you've ever seen. Exactly. He's lightning at a bottom. Four-point lead for the Spiders. Theus thought about a three. Weber will take the three. No good. But Graham with the rebound. There is an advantage size-wise for VCU in this game, and you just saw it right there for Graham. The boards. Once again, VCU's bigger, more athletic, and deeper. Daniels for three, and it's good. That's the first field goal for VCU tonight. Their first two points came on free throws. Back, big key to the game for Richmond is Cedric Lindsay right there with the basketball. Gonna take care of the Rock. Had a great game last year, Tom, even though Richmond lost that 22 points, career high against VCU. One of the things that Shaka Smart has talked about this week is reminding his team about the 30-point the loss VCU had here a couple of years ago. He said, I know some of you weren't even here, but I'm sure you watched it. We have to remember that. Shot clock down to five. Robbins backs it against Daniels. That is a very tough fadeaway jumper. And another steal by a freshman. Brothers for three. No good. Well, Taylor is really active for the Spiders. Here comes Graham. Very difficult to defend. Partially blocked by Nelson Adoda.
thought the freshmen for Richmond were going to be overwhelmed. I don't think so, at least in the first four minutes or so. Been great so far, Tom, early in the game. The thing that scares me, if I'm a Richmond fan, is that the talented player, Darian Brothers, is a little streaky. 39 last game, as you know, Tom, last year, three games, he only had two points. Three games, so hopefully he can get off the schneid. Well, Cedric Lindsay gets the shot to go down. We talked to Travion Grant today about Lindsay because both are Washington D.C. area kids and they've been facing each other since they were 10. And he said it's kind of funny to look across town and see Cedric Lindsay at Richmond and of course he's at VCU. Exactly. Here's Theus with a tough spin move and great body control to get that shot to go down as he's going down. Tremendous move. That's a tough shot in traffic. Whistle blows and a timeout called. Well, Pete, the freshmen have really stepped up for the Richmond Spiders. Nelson Adota, early on, has been able to put together some pretty good defensive work, not only with some steals, but also some rebounds. And how about a block shot? Tremendous. That's Travion Graham. And that sets up this shot by Cedric Lindsay. Got a little space. And gets the shot to go down, and they're going to need that as the night moves on. Exactly. Once again, they're going to have to bring their A-plus game to upset this very talented and deep VCU team. Well, we mentioned during the outset about the A-10 standings and how they've been kind of jumbled up because of what happened in Philadelphia last night. A great win by uh, John Giannini's LaSalle Explorers against Butler. I asked Shaka Smart about that, you know, if his team took a look at the losses on the road in the Atlantic 10 last night. He goes, well, our guys look at Butler because we saw them in the Final Four. He goes, beyond that, they don't really think about that at all. He worries about his own team, Tom, right. which I respect. That's what John Wooden, the late great coach at UCLA, did. Worry about us. Worry about the other teams or other opponents. Kendall Anthony in for the first time. So is Trey Davis. Allen's in for the first time, too. He has the ball out front. Trey Allen out of Houston, Texas. Shot clock is down to seven. Anthony with a fist up and a little hesitation. That was a tough pass. Shot clock at two, and it's a violation. Well, that goes down as a turnover. As we said, VCU forces 21 per game. That's something that Chris Moody and the Spiders need to deal with. Well, more than 9,000 on hand tonight here at the Robbins Center. It is a sellout between VCU and Richmond. Richmond has the lead. Now, here are the leading scores for the Spiders. Brothers leads the way with 16.2. Then Kendall Anthony, who's now coming off the bench. They are without a guy, though, that's averaging more than 13 points per game. And that's Derek Williams, the junior from Harlem, New York, and St. Anthony's. There is Derek. Now, Pete, what was he doing yesterday? He was the audio guy yesterday at practice, wasn't he? Yeah, we were at practice yesterday, and they're blasting the music loud, so the players had to really focus and concentrate, and uh, good job by Chris Mooney. Yeah. It's good music, too. Well, Derek Williams had a smile on his face every time Chris Mooney told him to pump up the volume even more, and he was in the corridor across the way from where we are, and he was in charge of that. They're hoping he's going to be back in the next several weeks after a high ankle sprain and some torn ligaments. Back to action, VCU gives the ball down low to their big man who can't get the shot to go down. So you see the turnovers, VCU with three, Richmond with two. And now Richmond with a one-point lead can add to that lead. I think the tempo's in Richmond's favor right now, Tom. Slow, methodical, not too crazy. The wilder the game, the better it is for VCU because they're more athletic, they're more talented, they're quicker, they're bigger, they're stronger. Well, both teams need to get their scores involved. Brothers and Graham are both scoreless as... Greg Robbins is fouled going into the paint. As we talk to uh, both coaches, the referee is a key to this game. They're going to let a lot go. Advantage VCU because they're athletic and they're physical and they're aggressive. It's going to be a tightly called game. Advantage for Richmond because they're more finesse, calm, and more delicate on the perimeter. Well, with your uh, experience as a coach, did you always look at the officials to see who they were before a ball game? Oh, yeah, that was important. We scouted them. I didn't do good a job scouting because I'm here on Boot Hill with you, but I'd love to be with you, but I didn't scout too well because I'm history. Well, VCU's defense pushes Richmond all the way out toward midcourt, and there's the havoc. It forces a turnover. And now VCU in transition. Well, that's a tough pass. Guest. Jared Guest, the sophomore from Columbia, couldn't catch it along the baseline. Well, 
Shaka Smart, his team this year, first at turnover margin, first in steals, and that's been something that he has installed since taking over at VCU. Exactly. Those are the players he recruits, Tom. Quick, athletic, tough, hard-nosed guys. If you recall, during his uh, press conference when he was hired, he brought up the word havoc and wreaking havoc on the psyche of the opposition. Boy, did they really latch on to the word havoc when it comes to VCU. The, two, the quickest plays in the country is going at each other. Deontay Weber and Kendall Anthony, two lightning quick guards. Well, and Anthony's fouled on the floor. Kendall Anthony's listed as at five foot eight, 140 pounds. He was the A-10 Rookie of the Year a season ago. Started for the first part of this year, but Chris Mooney's decided to bring him off the bench because he feels like it's better for him to watch, assess, and then come into the ball game. As Graham checks back in, give him a nice boost off the bench. Tom. Fresh 35 for the Spiders. Take the time. This is the tempo you want, the pace you want. VCU wants to pick it up. And they've lost Tom to three games. They've only averaged 58 points in their losses. Nice. Now they've won 83 points. So. Nelson Adota is fouled just outside that circle by Travion Graham. Oh, excuse me. They're going to call it on Reddick. So they call it on Reddick before the circle on the trip on Nelson Adota. Graham had a charge, but he called it before, as you mentioned. So a one-point lead for the Spiders. Very low scoring at this point, as Pete said. That's uh, in the favor of Richmond. Trying to put him to sleep, Tom. Prince and offense taking the time. We'll pick and pop here. And Adota, Nelson Adota with a soft jumper from 17. He's a red shirt freshman, was with the program all last year. If you remember Justin Harper, a draft pick of the Orlando Magic a couple of years ago. That's who they liken him to, and Chris Mooney's using the same pattern he used with Justin Harper with Nelson Adota. Three pointer by uh, Cedric Lindsay is no good. That's not the shot they wanted, Tom. Lindsay's not a great three-point shooter. Very good player, but not a great three-point shooter. It was also early in the shot clock, too. Exactly. Melvin Johnson, the freshman from New Jersey, is in the ball game for the first time. He's number 32. He's along the baseline. Now he's popping out up top. VCU's running their man-to-man -man offense against this matchup zone, which means a lot of cutters, Tom, a lot of movement, a lot of activity. 11.42 to play here in the first half. Richmond with a three-point lead. Not a whole lot of offense as we kick this one off. Richmond 10, VCU 7. Richmond's doing a fabulous job controlling the tempo, really going slow, methodical. And VCU's getting nervous now. They get the ball here on offense. After one pass, they get a quick shot here by Darius Theus. Off balance, bad shot. It was a brick because 27 seconds left on the shot clock. They were nervous, they were hitching, twitching, fleeing from the eyes, foaming. <laughs> and because Richmond's great methodical offense. You know, they're not scoring, Tom, but the control of the tempo game, which is big. Well, you look at the field goals for both teams. Uh, for Richmond, 44%, a four for nine. VCU, meanwhile, two of eight. You mentioned that VCU is running its motion offense against the matchup zone. Would you do that as a coach? I would. I would run motion, a lot of cutters, motion offense, and I mix it up, Tom, with a couple of set man-to-man -man plays. We see you with the ball, fresh 35 after the foul against Travion Graham. Right now, what VCU's going to do, Tom, they're going to go inside, get the ball inside. And get Graham maybe going, but Graham's called for the traveling violation. That's the fifth turnover for VCU. Travion Graham, what a special player. He's out of uh, St. Mary's Riken in Washington, D.C. He is a, a guy who has guard skills and the strength of a forward. It's just been a remarkable first two years for him at VCU. And he, again, has not scored so far in this ball game. Tough pass. Nelson Adota has it knocked out of bounds, and it will be VCU ball. It was almost like an unforced turnover, Tom. They just threw the ball right to the VCU player. Oh, but Johnson checks out of the ball game. Yeah, Nelson Adoto's hand was in front of Theus's hand. 
And that's why it's DCU ball. Nine minutes gone by here in the first half. Yep, that scores right. It's 10 7 Richmond. I go inside. If the Javante Reddick, the big guy for VCU, a post up, Travion Graham. Go inside. Here's Theus with the little teardrop. Not a bad shot. He got a friendly roll off the side of the rim. Tom, when they're in trouble, he bails them out every time. You know, Shaka Smart has his radio show just as Chris Mooney does, and Shaka does a lot of the interviewing on that radio show, and he recently had uh, Darius Theus on. He talked about him being the first recruit for Shaka Smart, and while he was interviewing him, he, he kind of got emotional about their four years together. Another three attempt. That one's good. Dion Taylor, the freshman from St. Augustine High School in New Orleans, Louisiana, comes up with his second three of the half. Loose ball picked back up by VCU. Ten minutes left to play here in the first half. Richmond still in there. Matchup zone. Try to cheat to the man. It's in his zone, but it's switching, sagging. He's got to run your man off it. Now just go inside. Throw it to the big dog. Javante Reddick, throw him the ball. Weber does get it to him in the baseline in a tough spot, and he forces his way to the basket. Count the bucket, and he'll go to the line. Well, they kind of just relied on his athleticism and strength against Nelson Adota. He's a terrific player. Once again, he's 6'9". He's a potential pro. Sometimes he's a little bit laid back, but he's a terrific talent. Go inside. It's a junior, Tom, against a freshman. So, uh, I'm VCU. I'm pounding the ball inside. So Travion Graham, power forward, or Reddick right there in the free throw. You did the St. Joseph's VCU game last week. He had 17 rebounds in that ball game. Exactly, Tom. He was tremendous. One point game, Richmond on top. And Anthony brings the ball into the front court. Anthony, Lindsay, Allen, Robbins, who has it at the free throw line, and Taylor in the game for the Spiders. Robbins back at his way in. He got a little space. Pretty shot. And Robbins has given the Spiders a three point lead. Greg Robbins out of Lower Marion High School. Outside of Philadelphia, the same school that produced Kobe Bryant. We are live at the Robbins Center on the campus of the University of Richmond, along with Pete Gill, and I'm Tom McCarthy. It's the black and blue classic between VCU and Richmond. Shot clock under 10. Theus leaves it for Reddick with a one-handed slam. Now that was comfortable. Exactly. And once again, Theus, he created that Tom. He got in the lane. Dribble penetration really hurts this matchup zone. Seven points for Reddick. He leads the way for VCU. Anthony out of control, gets his own rebound, and before he hit the floor, he put it back in. There are some diminutive guards in the Atlantic 10. Anthony is one of them who uses every bit of his size to his advantage. Here he goes for a three. I don't know if the roof would have popped off if he nailed it, but it would have gotten loud here at the Robin Center. Got a great look, Tom. Richmond wants to score in the first five seconds and transition over the last five to try to shorten the game. They know they don't have the talent and the athletes that VCU has. Well, they have a three-point lead, just under eight to play in the first half. VCU, the top scoring team in the Atlantic 10, averaging just under 80 points per game, and an offensive foul called against Reddick. John Hall made the call. Great job by Darian Theus attacking the basket. He's their leader. Get in the lane, penetrate, try to get it to the big guy. Theus with a nice penetration. He dumps it to the big guy. Reddick is in the house. Nice hoop for the big guy. watch football at Buffalo Wild Wings. It's so great to see you guys outside the office. So you brew your own beer? Yeah, for you, Bratwurst beer, and this one's a secret. Ooh. Drink up. This one's ready in two minutes. Protect the football. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings Beer Sports. Oh. 
It's time to pursue our dreams, to chase what we believe in. It's time to work, to give it our very all and not give up. American Family Insurance believes your dreams deserve the best protection. That's why we're committed to being there for you every step of the way. Now we have a score, Richmond 17, VCU 14. Here's a great example of inside-out play. Nice job, they pass it into Robbins here. They kick it into Robbins inside right here. A nice pass, all right, and then he attacks the basket. Attack the basket here. Go to the basket, all oh, the defense freeze it there, please. Three guys are around him. He kicks it out for a wide open jump shot. The Taylor, full, plenty of time, raises up, bottom. Nice job by Deion Taylor. Great inside out by the Spiders. It's also understanding the abilities uh, of your teammates when you're Robbins, you know, knowing that, all right, somebody's going to be open. And even if it's a freshman, I'm comfortable with that somebody taking that shot. Exactly. That was good poise, and Robbins does a lot of little things. Well, Robbins and Taylor take a seat on the bench for the Spiders. Davis checks back into the ball game. So does Trey Allen. And Wayne Sparrow inbounds the ball to Anthony. Man-to-man -man defense by VCU. Well, you are right about the speed of Briante Weber and Kendall Anthony. Watching oh, those two match up against each other. I don't know how they stay in their shoes. The lightning quick, Tom. See, the possession arrow belongs to VCU. Backing his way in is Allen. What a beautiful up and under, and he gets it off the glass. Terry Allen, averaging two and a half points per game, has a bucket for the first time tonight. Well, they're doing a great job on Travion Graham tonight. Three pointer from way up top by Troy Daniels is no good. And I believe a foul called against Travion Graham. It is. Now coming up at AT&T at the half, uh, Adam Zucker, Mateen Cleves, Al Abdul Nabi, and John Rothstein will give you all the latest scores and highlights from around the world of college basketball and preview the Wyoming at UNLV game, which is following this one here in Richmond. How about what Shaka Smart was saying about Mateen Cleves when Mateen was visiting with VCU earlier this year? He said, what a charismatic, intelligent, influential guy, Mateen Cleves. Wonderful young man, a tremendous influence on his VCU players. He does a lot of charity work back in Flint, Michigan. He's a special guy, and we're thrilled to have him with CBS Sports Network. Five-point lead for Richmond off the missed free throw by Nelson Adota. Oh, VCU just trying to find any kind of rhythm right now offensively. Tom, it's not that complicated. Throw the ball inside. Throw it, it inside. It worked the two times exactly. they did it. Exactly. The Reddick now. T.J. Haley, he could score inside to give him the ball. Brandon Bird shot no good. Rebound pulled down by the Spiders. And here's Anthony in transition. Here's Sparrow penetrates just a little bit. And then content to pull it back out. And Anthony will reset the offense with the shot clock under 10. Now Anthony to the basket. Oh, that was a shot that was misdirected by Haley, just with his body alone. That's the time they got to make hay if you're Richmond. VCU's a little cold, Tom. The VCU under 40%. With a freshman. For Richmond, eight of their points, eight of the 19 coming off from freshmen as Allen is able to pull down the rebound. Five point lead for the Spiders. We have mass substitutions about to happen at the next uh, stoppage of play. Nelson Adoto will pull up from 18. He banked it home. I don't know if he called blasts. Tom, the banks are open in Richmond, Virginia <laughs> at 738. Make a deposit. <laughs> Uh, another bucket by the freshman and a block by Terry Allen and he'll be called for the foul. Well that's exactly what Brandenburg needed to do. Nice shot by Brandenburg. Looks like a good block to me Tom. Fishers are doing a good job but I think they missed that one. It looked like there was separate separation body to body. 
So now Brandenburg to the line, 61% on the year. And it's a six point ball game. The VCU has gone more than three minutes, coach, without a field goal. It was that dunk by Reddick. And this pace of the first half has been owned by the Spiders. Exactly. Give Richmond a lot of credit, Tom. They had all underclassmen in there. Five guys, there were no juniors or seniors in that last clip now that upperclassmen came back in at that substitution, but they're playing a lot of young guys. Brandenburg makes both of his free throws. He'll check out Melvin Johnson, who originally committed to Miami and then over the summer was released by the Hurricanes. And it was a pleasant surprise for Shaka Smart. He's in for the second time for VCU. Well, Lindsay does a good job keeping possession of the ball, even though he was triple team coming up the floor. He was fortunate, Tom. They threw the ball to the corner and he was in trouble. I think Lindsay may have gone along the baseline. He did, according to Sean Hall. That is five turnovers for the Spiders. It's not too shabby, to be honest with you, with 5.02 to play in the first half. Yeah, it's good, Tom. They average 13 turnovers a game, so five right now against this pressure D is excellent. Tucker Smart's got a set play, set man play now. They're going to win. pulls it out of the hands of Brothers. VCU's in trouble. Theus usually bails him out with a pass or a bucket. Good help by Taylor. Johnson with a nice move and count the bucket. Melvin Johnson is the freshman. Nice spin move. It's in the lane. It's hit. Nice finish. Tough to spin in traffic like that, Tom, but terrific move by Melvin Johnson from Bronx, New York. He's only a freshman, very talented young player. And he finishes up the three-point play. They're excited about the fact that Johnson will be here for three more years after this, and they also have uh, Jordan Burgess, the younger brother of Brad Burgess, former star at VCU, who will be eligible next year. Brothers, scoreless so far, will go to the free-throw line and try to end that. How surprised are you, Pete, that Brothers and Graham are scoreless at this point? I guess it's more surprising that Graham is than Brothers is. Very surprised, both of them, Tom. They're both tremendous players. Once again, that might have been a call where, hey, it was a makeup call maybe, or a call. Is that put foul down there, Tom? Wasn't a foul, so maybe a referee saw something, minor contact, but you know, so we'll see. But no shock, he didn't like that call. Get on the officials. He's talking to Mike Roberts right now. Mike yep. Roberts is on the far side next to Shaka. Yep. Shaka Smart. Brothers made the first. Very good free throw shooter. 88% for the year. Makes the second. His first two buckets of the game. And it's a four point Richmond lead. PCU is trying to speed it up a little bit, even in their offensive sets. They do go down low to Guest, and I don't think he realized he was that open, but he's able to follow. Like Terry Allen tapped that in. It looked like a Richmond player. Was it Allen? Looked like it by mistake, yeah. I mean. Well, Guest is going to be called for the foul, I believe. It will be against him. They're going to credit it to Guest, but maybe it was Allen who tipped it in. We'll see. I think you're right, Pete. I think they were both uh, in on that ball. Yeah, I think Allen got a piece of it, Tom. Yes, got the basket. Jared Guess, the sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina. Great size at six foot eight. So, brothers, two for two from the free throw line. Asked him about those 39 points that he scored his last time out about Sh uh, against Charlotte as Anthony checks back in. We we're talking to him about how he felt. He said, well, I scored the first 17 points of the game. He scored the first 17 points. I never heard that, Tom. I never did. And he said he felt at that point that he wouldn't miss the rest of the night. He said it was that good of a night. It's unbelievable. I like this by Richmond. A little pressure by them now. Press a pressing team. It's very important. I don't like this. Well, there you go. Forced the turnover. Daniels tried to keep his footing along the sideline. So seven turnovers for VCU, five for Richmond. Change of pace, though. I like that. Great move by Chris Mooney. See, 
the turnovers for both teams make it six for Richmond. And that's a foul on Nelson Adota battling for that loose ball. He bumped guest. 350 to play here in the first half 25 21 the pace advantage Richmond. What's Richmond on top 25 21 with 350 to play here in the first half well, moments ago. This is all part of the 100 100 year celebration of Richmond basketball. They have brought back the all time leading score in Richmond basketball history Johnny Newman tonight. Fans received a bobblehead, a Johnny Newman bobblehead with his number 20. My Petey looks pretty good after playing 17 years in the NBA. He looks great. Looks like he's diesel. He play a game right now. <laughs> he was a scorer, though, wasn't he, in college? And he turned out to be a pretty good pro. 17 years, you got to give him credit. That's amazing. That's a lot of longevity to play in the NBA that long is amazing. Well, he is courtside watching this rivalry that he was part of in, from the 83-86 season. A robbery that began in 1976. It's called the Black and Blue Classic. Because of its intensity, because of the physical nature of this, this robbery, and they'll face each other twice this year. It's the first time in 12 years that they're in the same conference. They were in the CAA together at one point. There's Theus up top, covered by Robbins. Melvin Johnson in front of the Richmond bench. Johnson floater. Wow. From 10 along the baseline. That's the athleticism that they love for the freshman. What a tough shot Tom. It looked like he was going to pass it but then he shot it the last thing. He's a very talented young guy. Well and this makes it just a two point ball game. So although the pace favors Richmond VCU is within reach. Exactly right there. And they have great spurt ability Tom. Yep, that's one of their keys is that they can go on a run very quickly. Allen left hand off the glass. Young players for uh, Richmond Tom are doing a great job early in this game. They do not seem at all phased by this matchup. Four point ball game. Under three to play. Melvin Johnson with a crossover was able to get his uh, body away from Robbins and then again in midair shift to get the shot. This guy has trouble getting into the game, Tom. So the depth of the guards at VCU is amazing. Yeah, VCU will go 10 11 deep, which uh, says an awful lot for the recruiting of Shaka Smart and his outstanding staff. Robbins in the paint, notices the double team. Extra pass to Brothers. He has separation and it pinballs in and out. That ball's going to go out of bounds off Haley, I believe. Nope, they're going to say Richmond touched it last. Well, Pete, we talked about this being the black and blue classic. Here are some of the uh, the robberies around college basketball. Xavier and Cincinnati, you were part of that, the Crosstown Classic. Fordham and Manhattan, the Battle of the Bronx. How about Villanova and St. Joseph's, the Holy War? Now, we're asking fans to tell us what they think the Belmont Lipscomb Rivalry is called. We know what it is, but we want you to tweet your answer to CBS Rivalries. And we'll give that answer later on. We'll give some of the top responses to it. Only the diehard fans will know that one unless they live in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, when, when you told me, I had no idea. Nope. Well, uh, people will be Googling their face off. No Googling. No Googling. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Lindsay in transition, two point ball game. Anthony covered up top by Weber. I think it's important for Richmond to have the lead going into the half because they've been leading the whole game so far. Allen launches a three. It was a high arcing three pointer and Theus with the board. They're starting to cool off a little bit from beyond the arc. However, they have the lead with 120 to play in the first half. Theus, spin move, extra pass. And Weber will take the 15 footer. Ooh, how high he got off the floor. Brandenburg. Boy, one of these teams really trying to get a three to go down. Robbins with a tremendous hustle play. Anthony with the three. Well, Kendall Anthony will be credited with that shot to excite the sold out crowd, but Robbins, Robbins was the difference here. That was an unbelievable pass 
to get it to Anthony. Great job by the senior. Big time shot by the sophomore. Rookie of the year in the eighth. Great hustle by Robbins. Transition pulls up. Little guy with a big heart. Bang. Well, Kendall Anthony, who had been starting when this year began, averaged 13 points per game last year. And he is coming off the bench now because they wanted him to be more of a spark, and he certainly was a spark right there by Cannon, that three-pointer. Tremendous. You know about the hustle by Greg Robbins, a senior. Didn't play much his first three years, Tom, as you know. This year he's starting and uh, doing a great job. Not super talented, but does a lot of little things. He's a glue guy. Well, Richmond three for nine from beyond the arc. VCU one for eight. We said these, these two teams are two of the best three-point shooting teams, percentage-wise, makes per game, makes for the year, and they're a little cool right now to start this game. Exactly. The one-two-two, three-quarter court zone press by Richmond. I like it, Tom. Press a pressing team. Well, the Johnson one-handed shot. Oh my God! But he has put together a highlight reel of a first half with his three buckets. He's keeping the 19th ranked VCU Rams in this game. Freshman from St. Benedict's in New Jersey. The difference in about five seconds between shot clock and game clock. And we'll get some free throws with 24.5 to play. Well, Melvin Johnson, we said, has been a highlight reel in this first half. I mean, look at this, Pete. I mean, how do you get this shot off? Unbelievable. It's a playground shot, Tom. Playing in the playgrounds and open gyms in New York City from the Bronx. But he's, boy, he's terrific. He's got a great future at the Rams. He's excellent right now. Shaka Smart said it was the fastest recruitment he's ever had. He was on a bus this past summer. You know, VCU and Richmond both went to Italy, so he was on a bus with the team. He got a text message after Melvin Johnson decommitted from Miami and Miami released him of his scholarship and he basically in a matter of minutes committed to VCU. Great so get for the Rams. Man. Lindsay makes both free throws. Richmond has the advantage free throw shooting tonight. They're seven of nine. VCU six for six. Last shot coming up here at the half with a five point Richmond lead. The ball to Melvin Johnson. He's on fire. Trillion Graham has not scored in this half. Theus to the rim, and he'll go to the line. So Robbins called for the foul. No, oh, no, excuse me. It's Terry Allen. It's his second. Last time VCU trailed was their last loss. That was back on the 24th of November against Missouri. They've won 13 straight. I mentioned that last night in Philadelphia, the A-10 standings were jumbled because of a great win. Exciting last second victory by LaSalle against a previously unbeaten in the league, Butler. Exactly. Tremendous league this year, Tom. It's unreal. How about the A-10 tournament in Barclays in Brooklyn? It's going to be fabulous in March. 32-28 to score. Theus the second free throw. And it's a three-point game. So, VCU perfect from the line in this first half, and it's kept them within reach. A little pressure, two seconds to play. Robbins lets it fly, and it would have counted if it had gone down. Instead, Richmond will be content with a three-point lead. It's 32-29 as we reach halftime here at the Robbins Center. Well, the pace certainly favored the Richmond Spiders in the first half. Exactly, but uh, once again, PCU's very deep, very athletic, so it's a long way, and PCU's right there. 32-29 the score at halftime. After the break, stay tuned for AT&T at the half on CBS Sports Network. The CBS Sports Network presents AT&T at the half. Rethink possible. All right, welcome everyone to AT&T at the half, and it is 32-29 in Richmond. The Spiders on top right now of VCU. I am joined by my friends, Martin Cleves, John Rothstein, and Ala <laughs> abdel and, uh, Your thoughts on the first half? Well, you're playing VCU. You've got to make sure you handle the basketball and protect it, and VCU leads the, the country in turnovers, sports turnovers, and steals. Right now, only one steal in 20 minutes. 
and they've only forced four Richmond turnovers. Richmond doing a great job, but that's what happens when you're familiar with another team. They don't catch you by surprise, their system. Exactly, and that's one thing that I've noticed. Richmond, they're not intimidated by these guys. They see them out at, uh, at local restaurants, and they play basketball with them in the summer. They're not uh, 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 Worried about that press, about that trap. They're moving the ball, and they're attacking. That's one thing I like about Richmond. You have to attack the pressure, and that's what Richmond is doing. VCU is known for the term Havoc. Havoc is not resonating in the first half. Richmond has dominated the tempo. Very methodical team. Really impressed the way Chris Mooney's team has responded in the first 20 minutes. All right, VCU, though, not the only ranked team trailing at the moment. Let's go to the Big Ten. Purdue <laughs> bringing that stingy defense to number two Michigan. The Boilermakers have won three straight, holding teams to 50 points on average these last three games. And they are hitting the three-pointers. DJ Bird right here. Oh, he's a shooter. Now, that's a guy you can't leave open. He shot that two steps behind the three-point line. <laughs> that was way out. Now, Trey Burke missing the layup. Ronnie Johnson the other way to Tyrone Johnson. Nice little brother-to-brother -brother combo right there. Sharing is caring. <laughs> but Michigan down one on the break. Here's Glenn Robinson the third. Oh, look. Great pass right there. Excellent finish with contact. Easy stuff there, but Purdue, 7 of 13 from 3 in the first half. That's how you get a big win on the road, though, huh? Up one right now at the break, John. Well, when you look at this Purdue team, I don't really think their record is reflective of how capable they are as a basketball team. Remember, they were the team that took the legs out from Illinois early in Big Ten play, and we all know that Matt Painter, pound for pound, one of the elite tacticians in college basketball. Oh, yeah, he can coach, and, and they play hard. Purdue plays hard. The kid I love is Ronnie Johns. He's a freshman, and the thing I like about it, he picks up full court. I don't care who he's guarding. He's guarding one of the best point guards in the country right now, Trey Burke, and he's picking him up full court. I love the heart in that young guy. And the defense is kind of taking Michigan out of the rhythm a little bit. We talked about prior to the game how good of a shooting team this Michigan Wolverines team is right now. They're not shooting poorly, but not, they're not shooting at their lofty expectations, and I think that has a lot to do with it. All right, and, uh, you know, Michigan had won 27 of their last 28 at home, but that one loss was to Purdue, so uh, Boilermakers mm -hmm. trying to do it again. Speaking of uh, home field, home court advantage, Ole Miss 4-0 in conference play for the first time since 1937. Tennessee 0-4 on the road, so you'd think they'd be in trouble. Guess what? Mm. Not so much. Uh, Rebels with the early lead there as Murphy Holloway scores on the fast break. Jarvis Summers looking for the layup. Denied by Tennessee. Rebels 4 of 24 in the first half. John L. Stokes on the reverse layup. This might be the best half of basketball Tennessee's played all year. Nick Williams, after Ole Miss was trailing by nine, didn't have a field goal for over 10 minutes of action. One of the highest scoring teams in the country, down by seven at the break. Just 18 points scored in the entire first half. Well, when you're being, uh, I guess, really kind of throttled, uh, you're smothered, if you want, a defensive end of the floor. They've got shot 0 for 6 from the three-point line, not to mention, as you mentioned, the 4 for 24. So give credit to the defense, but Ole Miss right now struggling on their home floor. Well, it shouldn't really come as a surprise. I mean, the main difference between Ole Miss last year and this year is Marshall Henderson. Marshall Henderson hasn't gotten going yet offensively. The result, Tennessee's up seven. Well, and when you're ranked in the country, you're going to get that other team's best game. And Tennessee, one thing they can do, they struggle in the offense, game, but one thing they can do is guard. Conzo Martin put a lot of emphasis on defense. Struggle's a compliment with the way they've played. <laughs> <laughs> Besides being number 23 in the country, number three in points scored per game and uh, on a seven game winning streak entering this one when we come back here on at t at the half we'll preview the second game of our doubleheader as 15 and 2 wyoming coming off a huge win over san diego state looks to upset the perennial mountain west favorite unlv stick around Well, it was a surprising first half here at the Robbins Center. I don't know if anything was more surprising than how Estefania was able to bend her body as part of the halftime entertainment here at the Robbins Center. She is from Cirque du Soleil. Just a remarkable performance before the start of the second half. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy along with Pete Gillen. Pete cannot move his body the way Estefania can move her body. One thing, though, Pete, you can break down a ball game. And this first half was exactly what Richmond wanted. Did a great job. Slow pace, tempo. Their offense was outstanding. They took their time. They put VCU to sleep, and VCU got out of sync offensively. And they never really got back into sync. And let's take a look at the first half st stats. They're brought to you by Five Hour Energy. 52% field goal percentage for Richmond, which is outstanding. But look at the threes. Neither team is really connected on threes. 
but also VCU has not been able to turn Richmond over. Exactly. Uh, VCU's getting out of sync, one for eight from three-point land. It's not very good. They usually shoot 36 percent, but Melvin Johnson was fabulous. I think he was the story for VCU keeping him in the game with nine points. He's the leading scorer in the game. Well, this was the other storyline in the first half. Travion Graham held scoreless and only two shots in the first half. It's unbelievable. Leading score for VCU and Brothers got four free throws. That's it. So both teams, uh, their main guys are struggling. So we'll see what happens. I think, Tom, the big key is the first four minutes of the second half. Who's going to grab the game by the throat? Well, Graham picked up his second foul at the 7.02 mark, so he was plagued by that for the remainder of the first half. The freshmen for Richmond have really got involved. In fact, uh, the freshmen have dominated the scoring. 17 of the 32 Richmond points have come from the freshmen. VCU, the fourth time they've trailed this season, 0-3 in the previous games. Those are the losses to Missouri, to Duke and to uh, Wichita State. So we're underway, second half, ECU with the ball. Same starting five for both. Theus running the point to Brandenburg. Trying to get Graham involved in some way for the Rams. Troy Daniels is a great three-point shooter for VCU. I try to get him the ball. Well, Theus tries to slip the pass. It's no good, and Graham with his first bucket of the night, and it's a one-point game. And that's part of it, Pete, with all that said about how Richmond has controlled the style, they've controlled the pace. VCU's only down by one. Right there, and they weigh you down, Tom. They have such great depth and athleticism and strength, so can Richmond hang on? See the five on the floor uh, for the Rams. I mentioned it was the same starting five. It was not Guest is starting the second half instead of Javante Reddick, the junior. This is okay for Richmond. Shot clock down to five. They're okay with that. Maybe not that shot, but they were okay with the shot clock winding down. Exactly. They didn't score, but at least VCU didn't get a steal, Tom, and get a chance to score in transition. So not a good possession, but they can live with that. Chris Mooney has spent a lot of this ball game on the bench with his coaching staff. Well, Shaka Smart has been walking the sidelines, pacing the sidelines. Here's Brandon Bird. Foul going up by Nelson Adota and Brandenburg can give VCU the lead with these two free throws. Jackus Mott never sits down. As we drive here, Brandenburg's the X factor. Foul by Adota, but uh, nice move. That's what they got to do. They got to attack a couple of passes, Tom, move this matchup zone, then drive the basket. A little bit of a size advantage for Richmond. It didn't pay off. Brandenburg. Misses the first free throw. It's the first miss of the night from the line for VCU. Now Dodo will check out. He has two fouls. That hurts now, which was really small, Tom. The tower is the biggest guy on the floor. Tower and Terry Allen, both at six foot eight. And Brandenburg makes one of two, and it's our first tie of the night. And the first three points of the second half uh, come off the hands of VCU as the ball's knocked out of bounds by Guest. A tough spot here now in that corner, Tom. They got a screen to get somebody free. VCU is a little more athletic and quicker, so you got a screen. You just, just can't come to the basketball. Well, they like that cross court pass, which you just saw to Allen. Lindsay trapped along the sidelines. They better hurry up. And they just barely get across the timeline with a second to spare. Now that clock, once it goes down to 25, you're getting in that neighborhood, but it is the official's time. But the official is the one that times out 10 seconds. That's what they go by. Brothers can't get it to go. Robin saves it. Here's Lindsay for three, too hard. And Taylor knocked that ball off the hands of Guest, so it will remain Richmond ball. Yeah, they got to take their time. Lindsay got a quick trigger. Once again, he's not a great three-point shooter, Tom. Only shot 40% from the field last year. So he's got to pick it up. And uh, Brothers, once again, got to be more consistent. He was unbelievable against Charlotte. Make that one now. Get him back in again. They can't win unless Brothers steps up. Absolutely. Whereas with VCU, they have other weapons besides Grant. Exactly. They've got tons of guys that can really take over a game. Brothers launches the three. Good! You're talking about him, Tom. 
You've got that magic touch from the Phillies <laughs> for the Richmond VCU game. Well, his 39 points his last time out, the most by a Spider since 1976. The answer is not there for VCU as Daniels knocks the ball out of bounds. 35-32 the score. Richmond on top by three. My brothers are streaky. You might be able to get going now a little bit, so. If I'm Richmond, I'm going to him. Run him along the baseline, get some screens, get a shot, get another look for uh, Darian Brothers. Theus checks into the ball game for Daniels. Brothers is one for five, by the way, from the floor. Meanwhile, Graham is one for four from the floor. Again, the pace is exactly what Richmond wants. VCU usually takes 64 shots a game. They've only taken 25 at halftime, Tom. So. That is a remarkable stat. The 64 and the 25. Yeah. Brothers from 18, no good. Robbins and Allen battling. It's Allen who's going to be fouled. Count the bucket. He'll go to the line. Got the screen out. Now, if you're VCU, you can't leak out in the break. No screen out. Terrific rebound. Nice finish by Allen. Heck of a play for the freshman from Houston, Texas. We want to talk about a coming out party for Allen and the rest of these freshmen. Freshmen for Richmond have been extraordinary right now in this type of game. They're trying to make this a, a six point game. Anthony is about to check in at the scorer's table. Anthony is in for Lindsay. All right, now Richmond is going to press. You said you like this. I love it. Even if they score, come after them a little bit. Attack, attack, attack. Don't just be receiving pressure. 6 0 run for the Spiders, and Reddick is fouled going up. It's okay. A little change of pace. Now you get out of it. But just, you know, you do it. Try to keep VCU guessing a little bit. You just can't always be receiving the pressure. Ubi Brown, the great coach at Atlanta Hawks and the Knicks, and now he's doing some TV commentary. Always said, press a pressing team. They're not used to it. Not, they don't like it. So it's a change of pace. It's good for Richmond. Reddick makes the first free throw. He has eight points. It's a five point game. Trey Davis checks in. Deion Taylor checks out. Tom, I love Javante Reddick from BCU. He could take over this game right now. He's going to low post and give me the ball every time down the court. Well, they he can't go. He's one of a handful of guys that has over 700 points in his career. That's one of the things that stands out to me about VCU is the balance that they have across the board. Tough pass off the shins of Allen. Here comes Weber. Up the floor. Leaves it for Graham. Graham to the paint. Teardrop is good. Well, Graham has four oh, points in the man, second man. half. Brothers trying to answer. Blocked away by Weber. And he's fouled by Allen along the baseline. Well, they forced the turnover, which is so important for VCU. They average over 25 points per game off turnovers. They haven't had that success tonight. But things can change very quickly with this havoc offense and defense that they put together. Exactly. And Richmond's got to be careful. They don't want to get caught up in this rat race style because VCU practices it every day. Richmond does not play that way. Here's Graham, mismatch against Anthony size wise. Give Reddick the ball. Javante Reddick, get him the basket. Weber in the paint off the rim. Reddick taps it away, but into the hands of Allen. Not a good shot, Tom. Anthony to Robbins, backed in against Graham. One-on-one, -on -one, up and under. Ooh, what a fake. How about that? They pulled out every move, every big man move that you could have. It looked like he was playing in a park, in Central Park <laughs> in New York City, with guys like my age or older. <laughs> Old dirt balls like me, and he just backed them in. Nice move. Greg Robin. Five point lead, Richmond on top. Shot clock down under 10. More than 9,000. First sellouts since last year against Charlotte. Johnson 
Well, he was out of control once he lost it along the lane. Here's Brothers. Calm down now, if you're Brothers is going crazy. He's got to calm down. Forget his points. Help his team win. Yeah, he's fortunate that Weber was called for that foul because he was kind of out of control. Robbins, well, everybody needs to do something for Richmond in order to win. And Robbins, he certainly just did his something. Open up the textbook, boys and girls. This is how you play the post. Here we have a score of 40 to 35 in favor of Richmond. But the Havoc defense is coming out. See what happens now. Nice double team in the backcourt. They throw it ahead. Richmond does a nice job attacking, but they play too fast. Havoc, both the ball gets kicked. That's what VCU wants. They want to play fast, pushing it ahead. They give it to Travion Graham, who's one of the top players, I think, in Atlantic 10 with a teardrop. That's Havoc at its best. Speed up the other team, get him out of control. There's Travion Graham. He's got to step up, too, now. Well, points off turnovers. VCU with nine. We mentioned they average over 25 per game. And the Havoc defense, it's not only steals, but it's also causing the other team uh, to you know, break down physically and mentally. Speed up, Tom. Play out of control now. Richmond can't get crazy now. Don't play to the crowd. Play to the game. Be patient. Put VCU to sleep. For two minutes there, we'll run up and down. That was danger time if you're a Richmond fan. You saw the shooting percentage for Richmond. They're still close to 50%. The turnover forced by VCU. Graham with good hands. Here comes Theus. Body control and the kiss off the glass. Every time VCU gets in trouble, that guy bails him out. Darius Theus is a tremendous player. The heart and soul of the VCU Rams. Packs the basket. It really finishes well, Tom, in traffic. But once he got past Anthony, he goes right, sliding right past Allen to get the ball off the glass. This is a kid who last year, with as talented as VCU was across the board, was the CAA Conference Tournament MVP. Eight points, three for four from the floor. It's a little too much on that shot. He made the big bucket to tie the game against St. Joe's, as you know. And BC won in overtime recently. Well, he's the kind of guy that Shaka Smart says, if there's 10 seconds to play, he's the guy I want to have the ball. And right there, he makes a beautiful block. Here's Johnson in transition, left open, count it. Pete, there's something different that Melvin Johnson brings that others cannot. Athleticism with his shot. He creates his own shot. He's like in the park, Tom. He just, he's fire. He's on fire tonight. He's got playing time. That little teardrop's a tough shot. Extraordinary freshman. Well, he's five of six from the floor. And he's just tied this ball game up at 40. 14.35 to play here in the second half. It's only the second tie of the game. And Lindsay is fouled by Theus. And you're going to get that from time to time. That's his second foul. I have to say, you and I go to a lot of shoot arounds, go to a lot of practices. There is a, there's something about a VCU practice and shoot around. It's the air that Shaka Smart presents to his team. As another foul is called on Theus, that's his third. Tied at 40, Theus with three fouls. By the way, we asked this question before, and we're going to ask it again. The notable basketball rivalry to see the Bedlam game between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Now, there are others, but we want our, our, our viewers to let us know what is the Belmont Lipscomb rivalry. Let's test their basketball knowledge. The Belmont's got a great program. Great program. Went to the NCAA the last five of the last seven years, so you got to know who Belmont is. You're a big time Hoops fan, and we do have a lot of Hoops fans. Watching us on CBS Sports Network. Yeah, we want you to tweet your answer to at CBS Rivalries. Here's Graham off the steal and the extra dish. Brandenburg for three. No good. But Graham is there to clean it up. And he'll go to the free throw line on the foul by Robbins. So Graham. As you would imagine, a very good free throw shooter at 
And ladies and gentlemen, it's VCU's first lead of the game. The number 19 team in the country is certainly being tested here tonight, and they lead it 41-40. Tom, the pace of the game is quicker now. It's to VCU's liking, so uh, they like that. David Hinton is in for the first time, the former walk-on. And Graham makes it a two-point game. Hinton, if you recall, two years ago, was substituted into the ball game when a VCU player in the lineup was hurt and he needed to shoot free throws. So Chris Mooney was able to pick whomever he wanted off the VCU bench to shoot the free throws, and it was Hinton. Talk about doing your scouting report. Exactly. Good move by Coach Mooney. Here's Brothers for three. Go! It's a one-point game, and the steal by Richmond. Anthony, and the roof is going to start coming off the Robin Center with shots like that. We've got a timeout on the floor. Well, it's called the Black and Blue Classic, but this has been the kind of game that relies on touch more than anything else. You do a lot. Richmond holding a 46-42 lead thanks to a very quick 6-0 run. All right, let's revisit your keys, coach, from the start of the ball game. Yeah, well, for VCU, speed up the tempo, but they only got two fast break points. Knocked down shots early, one for eight from three-point land top. So the keys for VCU, they're not doing it. Limit turnovers, Richmond is doing it. Minus one turnover margin, nine, remain patient on offense, but they're doing it. 21 first half field goal attempts, so Richmond is doing their two keys. VCU is not doing theirs. And by the way, VCU was one for eight in the first half beyond the arc. They're 0 for two in the second half, so one for 10. And as we said, these are arguably the two best three-point shooting teams in the Atlantic 10 coming in. I know Dayton is there, too. 46-42 the score, 13-25 and counting to play, second half. Troy Daniels for VCU is a great three-point shooter. Get him the ball if he gets hot, Tom. Big help for the Rams. He's one for three. He has their one three-pointer. There you see the three-point shooting. Brandon Berg bringing the defense in. Graham bobbled for a moment, battling for his own rebound, and Robbins is pushed by Travion Graham. Well, attempts per game, VCU nearly 25. They're not on target for that. Makes per game, 8.7. They're certainly not on target for that. But for Richmond, they're kind of in line from what right. their season average, is, average usually is. Yeah, 40%, so that's pretty good. They average 38% from three-point land, Tom. So Richmond's slightly ahead of their pace. All right, Pete, we have a development here. Reddick checks back in. That's a good thing for VCU, but Graham checks out. He's now picked up his third personal foul with just under 13 to play. Anthony for three, second straight three-pointer. Forty-two. The answer by Reddick on the soft slam to make it a five-point game. Tom, when Reddick gets it, good things happen for the Rams. They got to keep looking for them. Good job by Brandenburg on the assist. Anthony fouled at midcourt by Weber. Each team now with six team fouls. Theus will check back in. That's three fouls on Weber. So Theus has three, and Weber has three, Reddick has three, and Graham has three. Yeah, VCU's committing some fouls just over aggression, Tom. You know, way in the backcourt, we have no chance of stealing it. They're letting the motion get a little bit carried away. Here's Anthony. He has 10 points. It's all part of this 9-2 run. And he got a little uh, frisky on that one. May have been partially Blocked. I think he may have been hit as he let it go because it was really short. Yep. Melvin Johnson was on him. I didn't get a clear look, but he thought he was. He's complaining. He thought he got hit. Theus got to take over now. He's their senior. He's their captain. 
Matias moving on the near side. Brandon Berg tries to get it over the top of Alonzo Adota. Nelson Adota, excuse me. Here's Taylor for three. Good. Well, Richmond is starting to heat up from beyond the arc. Well, the freshmen continue to give the Spiders a shot in the arm. It's a 12-2 run off that three. And it's the largest lead of the night for Richmond. Reddick has it knocked away by Robbins. Good teamwork between Robbins and Brothers for three. And an air ball. Nelson Adoto with the rebound. Here's Taylor, second straight three, no good. And Daniels pulls it down. 52 44. Plenty of time left. BC, be patient, take your time, go inside. Cleo's good control, nearly stolen away by Brothers. Good way to feed the post, Thomas. Get it to the baseline, then throw the ball inside. That's it, throw it inside now. Brandon Berg decides to take the three. It's good from the corner. That's just the second three of the night for VCU. And now the Rams within five. Much of the sold out crowd. It's probably 60 40 Richmond fans. The VCU fans are some of the best in the East. Nelson Adota. Now Brothers on the crossover. Shot blocked, gets it back. Didn't have control. They score, Tom. I'm calling a timeout if I'm Richmond now. The tempo's getting a little crazy. Daniels way downtown. No good. Ooh, Reddick with the offensive board. Good decision to pull it out. Yep, take your time. Plenty of time left. They go inside. Get it to the big guys. Those are freshmen for Richmond. Red shirt freshman and a true freshman. Go inside to your big guys on BCU. Or penetrate by Theus. Speaking of time, we're halfway through the second half. The number 19 team in the country is down five. The Atlantic 10 was shaken up last night when LaSalle defeated Butler. Can it be shaken up again? We'll see. Brandenburg over the top of Nelson Adota with a nice dribble drive to make it a three-point game. Murphy trying to draw the foul. Teardrop no good. And now things are starting to swing back for VCU. The pace is VCU favor right now. And Theus trying to capitalize. Reddick is fouled going up. That'll be the fourth if it's on Alonzo Nelson Adota. Timeout on the floor. 9.20 to play here in the second half. The black and blue classic has been just that. Richmond on top by three, 52-49. Starting Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Network will provide over 50 hours of Super Bowl 47 coverage live from New Orleans. Join Phil Simms, Dan Marino, Boomer Size, and Bill Cower, Greg Gubble, Shannon Sharp, and the rest of the crew for all the news, analysis, and interviews you'll need. It all kicks off this Monday morning at 9 a.m. on CBS Sports Network. You got a prediction for that one, Pete? Give me a great game. I'm going to go with uh, San Francisco. I think uh, I think they'll win the game. Uh, Baltimore's terrific. Blacko's been awesome, but uh, I like San Francisco. I, I think they're going to win in a real terrific battle. 27-24. 27-24. It's remarkable that two brothers, two brothers, will face off as head coaches, Jim and John Harbaugh. Reddick to the free throw line with 9:20 to play here in the second half. Misses the first. By the way, speaking of that, I saw a conference call today where John Harbaugh asked his mom and dad a question. They didn't realize it was him until he asked the question. He said, I hear that Jim Harbaugh was always your favorite son. And, <laughs> and their mom all of a sudden started getting a little upset before his sister recognized that it was John that asked the question. They thought it was a reporter from Baltimore. A steal by VCU. Here comes Weber, knocked away by Trey Davis. Great recovery by Davis. Richmond's got to settle down, John, or VCU's going to pull away. They got to take their time, slow it down, get the tempo back in their favor. Under nine minutes to play, 52 50 to score.
Robbins has had a very interesting game. He has that ball stolen away. Brandon Berg tries to thread the needle, and he does. Our third tie of the night comes with each team scoring 52 points. VCU's going to win this game. They're going to wear him down. They're going to win this game by four or five points. <clears throat> right now, Richmond's playing too fast. Timeout called with 8.23 to play. Well, we asked you before about the rivalries because this is the black and blue classic between VCU and Richmond. We threw some out there that are around college basketball. And then we asked you about the Lipscomb-Belmont rivalry. All right, the answer is the Battle of the Boulevard, which right. you knew, and that's your question you came up with. Look at some of the answers that we received on Twitter. The Tennessee toss-up, the Tennessee <laughs> two-step, and the battle of, I don't know, they are good, but don't know where these schools are located. <laughs> All right. At least the fans are intense. They're fired up about this game, but there's a lot of ga great games, Tom, and rivals, and this is a special one here. It's going to grow more and more being in the A-10 twice a year, possibly a third game. I thought Phil Martelli from St. Joseph's uh, brought up some very good points earlier this week because, obviously, he's dealt with the St. Joseph's Temple rivalry, the St. Joseph's Villanova rivalry, the St. Joseph's LaSalle rivalry, you name it, he's dealt with it. He said, you know, there's a perception that comes with this rivalry, there's a recruiting battle, and there's also a battle for even advertising and those kind of dollars. Davis in the air, kept his control, and gets Richmond the lead. The freshman for Richmond have been fabulous. Honestly, it's astonishing how good and composed they've been tonight, Pete. You think about the points they had in the first half and how that's now carried over to the second half during money time. Freshman VCU, Melvin Johnson's been fabulous yep. also. Brandon Berg from the corner, no good. Graham puts it back. Or was that Reddick? Reddick. No, it was Reddick, yep. He's a gentle giant on. Tremendous talent. He just kind of laid back. Nice young man. Doesn't know how good he can become. Fans thought they heard a slap. Richmond Square Dance. It's allowed here at home. Lindsay on the crossover. Davis picks it up. And he's fouled going to the bucket. He's going to get a couple free throws with 7.22 to play here in the second half. Well, we've got 7.22 of what has turned out to be a very interesting game. Come on back to see the finish. Come on, kid, I'm Drew Brees. And I'm Harry. Who? From One Direction. Dudes, won the Super Bowl. Platinum album. MVP. On the cover. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, give me the Pepsi, and I'll get you a tryout. Cool. Hit me, Drew. Yeah, we're going to need another wall. What's the number for props? Take a note. Make a call. All on the same screen. LG Optimus G. Relax. Available on AT&T. Our spidey senses tell us that this is going to be a heck of a finish. We're tied at 54 with 7.22 to play. Let's take a look at our at t game summary. All right, Pete, what stands out to you here? Well, Javante Reddick is starting to take over this game for BCU there at the bottom of the screen. And Kendall Anthony is doing a great job off the bench for Richmond. Shooting's pretty even. BCU still, Tom, two for 13 from three-point land. They can get hot any minute. Rebounds are close. Points in the paint. BCU's really controlling the paint. The other storyline, too, which is not there, but we've been talking about it. The freshmen for Richmond have accounted for 25 of the Spiders' 54 points. And that says an awful lot. Almost half, Tom. 
It's great, so wonderful game, great for the A-10, tremendous for the city of Richmond. This is what it's all about, college basketball at its finest. Well, there you see Reddick splits, seven in the first half, eight in the second half. He averages 13 and a half per game. The junior from winston Sal, North Carolina. There's Deion Taylor, one of the freshmen who's accounted for part of those 25 points. Exactly. Reddick's going to take over this game, Tom, in the last seven minutes. You're going to you're going to will the big man to get the ball inside. You're going to will him to do that. Let the big man eat. Give it to the big dog. Two free throws for the Spiders. Trey Davis misses the first. It's his first attempt of the night as a team which been eight of eleven. Miss both. Richmond's playing three freshmen right now, Tom. It'll be tough against this talented veteran VCU team. That's part of the reason, uh, part of the reason because Derek Williams is out with that high ankle sprain. We mentioned that earlier. He's now the audio tech for the Richmond Spiders basketball team. The three is off the mark, so again, VCU cool from the outside. Just two made three-pointers in this game. And they usually shoot pretty well, Tom, for three-point line. Usually 36%. Not going, they got to adjust. Take a look at the possession arrow down low, just so you know where it is as we get later in this ball game. It's so important when every possession matters to keep an eye on that possession arrow. Richmond ball on the jump ball. Anthony, separation, no good. Johnson hustling with Trey Davis. They say Davis knocked it out last. Well, we hope that Wyoming and UNLV, which is coming up right after this ball game on CBS Sports Network, is just as entertaining in its own personality. I'm sure it'll be a great game, very exciting. Steve Lapis is the analyst and the play-by-play -play guy is, uh, I think, Andrew Catalano, I believe, the play-by-play. So we got a great crew. Andrew Catalan, who's uh, going to work a lot. Coach Lapis with that telestrator. He loves the telestrator, Coach Lapis. He's a great American. He's a great teacher, Steve Lapis. <laughs> well, we're tied at 54, and we'll get some free throws for Travion Graham. Uh, look at the size of Travion Graham and Reddick, those two big guys against the thin, talented front court of Richmond. Six-minute mark here in the second half, tied at 54. We've had three times. Here's Lindsey. Well, I don't know how he got that shot off. They say use that box. He used the top of the box. So give us the lead. Yep. It's one of those you say no, 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 and then when it goes in, you say good job, good job. We see you now. You throw it inside to Cravion Graham or Javante Reddick. Give the big guy the ball. She have a wide open three. Well, Reddick with the screen wanted the ball. He's matched up against Brothers. It's certainly a size advantage. Graham to the basket. Gets the second shot. No good. How about a third shot? And the foul is called against Richmond. Cedric Lindsay's a very talented player. He's really good off the bounce. Gonzalez, college prep. High school in D.C., circus shot. He's throwing it off the glass, Tom. When you go into the glass, use the glass. Terrific shot by Cedric Lindsay. Well, on the opposite side, Taylor is going to check out the freshman with four personal fouls. Trey Davis will check back in. And Graham rattles the first one home. He'll get a second shot to tie this game at 56. Again, Graham is a story tonight because he only has seven points. Credit to Richmond defense and their offense by really being deliberate. This is the second free throw. And it's a one-point game. See the timeouts at the bottom of your screen, three for each, three for VCU, three for Richmond. Both teams will be shooting free throws the rest of the night. Lindsay again in the paint finds Robbins. And Robbins is double teamed. He's got to get rid of it. That ball's kicked by Daniels. Shot clock will 
will shift up to 15. Good quick feet by Troy Daniels. Davis checks out. Kendall Anthony comes back in. We're getting close to, to this possibly being the, the five on the floor for Richmond for maybe the last five minutes. The way things are going. Brothers. With a shot clock under 10, knocked away by Weber, and it'll be VCU ball. Chris Moody uh, having a few words with Mike Roberts. Mike Roberts, Dwayne Gladden, and Sean Hall. That's Mike Roberts right there. Sean Hall was doing the, uh, the Miami Duke game last night, and he's along the baseline right now. He was called into duty late because Jamie Lucky, an outstanding official, was injured a few days ago and couldn't work tonight. Weber blocked away, picked up by Graham, and the cleanup gives VCU a one-point lead. Right now, the biggest possession of the game for Richmond. He got a good, good shot. Oh, they're looking for brothers. That ball knocked out of bounds. The freshman gave it up <laughs> at a very odd spot, and his teammates didn't come to help at all. 4.21 to play. Take your time. If you're Richmond, Tom, be patient. Try to move the ball and then try to drive it. Try to get to the free throw line. Here's Lindsay into the paint. Tough shot, Graham with the rebound. He was trying to draw the foul, wasn't he? Exactly. One point lead for BCU. Theus looks inside. That was a heck of a grab by Graham. And he's fouled at the free throw line. And Lindsay, I think, took a knee. He's holding his knee. I think he took a knee from Graham. We'll be back with 3.59 to play in the second half. VCU has just its second lead of the night. Well, uh, the number 19 team in the country has a one-point lead. It's been hard fought tonight, 57 to 56. Cedric Lindsay, you just saw in the uh, the huddle there, he was injured before the last timeout. Right there, he and Graham hit knees, and Lindsay was very slow to get up, but he did get up, and he went off without any help at all. So that's a good sign for Richmond. I hope he's okay. Right now, he's going to the bench, Tom. So I hope he can back in. You're a Spider fan. Well, just to reset things here at the Robbins Center, VCU has the lead, 57-56. They have three timeouts left, so does Richmond. Double bonus for Richmond. They'll be shooting, or VCU will be shooting two free throws for each foul. Meanwhile, VCU has 17 fouls, and Graham to the line where he is three for five. He has nine points and 10 rebounds, and it has been I don't want to say a struggle, but he has had a work for all 10 points and 10 rebounds tonight. Yep. Give a lot of credit to Richmond defense. He's doing a great job slowing him down. He's a good free throw shooter, Tom, as you know. 74% coming into the game. Trying to give VCU, and he does. Their largest lead hits just three, 59-56. During this 13-game winning streak, their average margin of victory is 21 points. Wish we got it to play their tempo, their style, and make big shots, but now with Lindsay, who's their primary ball handler, Tom, it's a big concern now if you're a Spider fan. Robbins out front against Graham along the baseline. We talk about walking the tightrope and a uh, turnover by Taylor on the traveling violation. That's 13 turnovers now for Richmond. They had six at the half, so the havoc is like a boxer punching in the belly in the belly sooner or later. The legs start to go. Don't forget coming up Wyoming and UNLV. Graham along the lane. Ooh, goes in and out. Battle for the loose ball. Here comes Anthony. Leaves it for Brothers. Catch and shoot. No good. But the rebound by Richmond. Brothers. He'd love to have some of those threes he made against Charlotte, Tom. Made eight, eight as you know, right? He's, he's two struggling. of eight in this game. Oh. Anthony has it knocked away. It'll be VCU ball. Think he might have got hit on that one. Anthony harassing Graham out near midcourt. 
Now, this has not been the style that that VCU is used to play. And that's more because of the style of Richmond. They get the ball to Theus now. Have him drive. He's a great penetrator. Theus has it up top. Shot clock at five. He'll stop and pop from 17. Brothers with the board. Two and a half to play in the second half. The number 19 team in the country has a three-point lead over the Richmond Spiders. VCU has won 13 straight. 5-0 and on the road. Only unbeaten team in conference play in the Atlantic 10. And it's the best Atlantic 10 ever as far as talent goes. Great league, Tom. So many terrific teams. Robbins with a little hop and a bump. No shot. He's fouled on the floor, but he'll go to the free throw line for a one and one. Uh, we mentioned last night LaSalle knocked off Butler. So VCU is the only unbeaten team, and Charlotte knocked off Xavier. They were unbeaten also. VCU is first at 4-0 and 16-3 oh, and and overall. But there's Richmond. There's a log jam, Pete. Right in the middle with all these two and two teams. It would be a monumental win if Richmond can upset VCU. Daniels in, Webb, Weber out. Lindsay's back in the ball game for Richmond, and a timeout called by VCU, so they have two left. With 1.58 to play, it's a three point game. We started talking before about Shaka Smart, the job he's done in his fourth year at VCU, 100 wins. I have never been to uh, a more relaxed, sort of energetic shoot around slash practice than I was today. And what separates him from everybody else, people say, is that he won't ask his players to do anything that he won't do. And I think that says a lot for a lot of the young student athletes that play for him. He really communicates greatly with his players. He gets on them, but he does it in a nice, classy way. Well, you just saw it pop up a moment ago. Coming up right after this ball game, Wyoming and UNLV. Andrew Catalan and Steve Lapis are waiting to call all the action as we reset things here. VCU down to two timeouts, Richmond to three. And the possession arrow belongs to the Spiders. Great having that arrow there. Nice little touch by CBS Sports Network. Well, Robbins to the line. Like Shock is talking with Chris Mooney now and having a little discussion about something. I think Shock is smart's concerned about something, and Chris Mooney didn't realize or didn't know what it was. So Shock is smart just said something to Sean Hall. Okay, so they're announcing please do not throw any objects onto the floor. Because it will result in an immediate ejection and a technical foul against the Richmond Spiders. Yep. That got VCU even more fired up. It I did. Know it. <laughs> Robbins misses the front end of the 1-1. One -one. He had been 3-for-3 three three in the final moments of games from the free throw line. His last few misses have been big for Richmond. Exactly. Free throws win a lot of games. 59-56, a three-point game. Brandon Berg into the paint. Close some time here, 135, 134. Shot clock at 10. Theus has the shot blocked away, and he's fouled by Deontel. Watch this, Pete, after that announcement was made. Watch this. <laughs> he's different in a very good way. He relates wonderfully with his players. They love him, he loves them. There have been some overtures presented to Shaka Smart. He has stayed at VCU, and I'll tell you what, he is great for the city of Richmond. He's great for the Atlantic 10 now, and I think the school itself is great for college. Play. Play. Does make it a two possession game. VCU is trying to extend a 13 game winning streak to 14. It's the second longest active streak in college basketball to Kansas. 
Butler lost last night. They were among the leaders in active winning streaks. Theus makes both. Five-point game, largest lead of the night for VCU. It's a 7-0 run. One twenty to play. Well, the defense is harassing Anthony, trying to draw the foul. And he just chucked that right over the backboard. Well, as composed as Richmond was for the first uh, 38 minutes of this game, or 35 minutes of the game, that's how discombobulated they've been. Exactly. The tempo was really big in VCU's favor, Tom. Much quicker. Richmond made a couple of big shots, but then they got carried away, got into the Havoc. And the Havoc really chopped them up. It's not over yet, but Richmond's in a big hole right now. Nearing the one-minute mark left to play here in the second half. I'm VCU now, but I'm going to take my time. Last eight seconds, throw it inside to Graham inside already. Throw it to the big guy, try to get a foul. Now, if you're Richmond, do you try to foul? Not right now. You got 10 seconds. I wouldn't foul right now. You got time. I'm going to foul. You should have fouled earlier. Well, the shot was no good, but the putback by Reddick was beautiful. Seven point lead. Lindsay in the paint, and he'll go to the free throw line. How about this cleanup right here by Reddick? Team that controls the boards, Tom, controls the game. Right now, VCU is controlling the boards and the game. Javante Reddick, very talented big guy. He's a gentle giant. You wake him up, he really roars. By the way, the last foul was on Brandenburg, so he is fouled out. That's his fifth. He leaves with eight points and two assists. Well, on a night where uh, Travion Graham, who's averaging over 16 points per game, has struggled and fought to get his double-double, 11 points and 10 rebounds, they've leaned on Javante Reddick, who has picked up 17 points and 8 rebounds. Look at this. You don't think this rivalry is important? He doesn't sit down. He goes up and down. Watch this again. Look, look where he is, Pete. Look where, where, look where Shaka Smart is. <laughs> he's not only out of the coach's box, he's on the floor. It's called the six-man defense. <laughs> Lindsay makes the first free throw. Uh, as we've said all night long, and we always say this on our telecast, if you haven't met him, he is refreshing on so many fronts. In fact, both of these guys are just great guys to talk the game with. Five-point game. It's a two-possession game with 37.7 to play. Davis checks back in. Nelson Adota checks out. Reddick fouled by Lindsay. All right. Well, the Spiders have won 50 of the last 59 games here at the Robin Center. They're 10 and one this year. Tough to win here. The only team that beat them here was Davidson. Bobby McKillop, an outstanding coach. Wildcats, but it's not over yet. Right now, Richards in a big hole. Reddick's first free throw is good. Again, it's still a two possession game with 36.7 to play. possession ball game a seven point lead with 35 seconds left Lindsay being harassed up top heading to the bucket high banking shot is good and a timeout called by Richmond it's 65 60 unbelievable shot by Lindsay Tom and I don't know how he makes that he's out of control and he kisses it off the glass so Chris Moody, what's he diagramming right here, Coach? I know he's talking defense, but he's also going to talk about the next offensive play, too, I would imagine. Yeah, what we're going to try to do now, if you're Richmond, try to trap the first pass at a corner. If not, we got a foul right away, Tom. The clock is our biggest enemy. If not, on offensive, we got to come down. we got to shoot a three. Try to get the ball on the baseline to try to get it to one of our, our best shooters, Darian Brothers, our best three-point shooter. Try to get it to him on the baseline or Kendall Anthony. One of those two. Got to shoot a three. Well, it's a five-point game. You see the game reset. The possession arrow still belongs to Richmond. 
Both teams with two timeouts left. There are years in conference play where you can pinpoint who the champion is going to be just at this point in the season. The Atlantic 10 is not that kind of conference this year. It is up for grabs. And you see who you want to foul if you're Richmond. They foul Graham. That's not the guy you would you want to foul, but you, you couldn't allow time to wind down anymore. Exactly. You, you don't have the choice. You got to foul quickly, but like you said, the leading score for BCU. Yeah, so if you're Richmond, from top to bottom is who you'd prefer to foul. Daniels four of eight from the free throw line. And now Graham, 11 points. Make it 12. Shot is no good. 25 seconds to play. 66 60 to score. Anthony lets it fly, and he's fouled by Daniels. He's going to get three free throws. All right, let me tell you, let me ask you if you were on the sidelines, what would your stomach be doing right now? I'd be going crazy. <laughs> I, you never foul a shooter, but you never ever foul a three point jump shooter. So that was uh, not a smart play for a very talented player, Troy Daniels, the senior. Yep. Good call by the official. I think the official's done a great job. I, I agree. Tough game to officiate with a lot of emotion and athleticism and aggressiveness. They've done a terrific job. 21 seconds to play. Anthony makes the first. Here's the second. It's good. He's an 84% free throw shooter. And he's made the first two of three. He makes this one. It's a one possession game. Exactly. And that it's a one it. possession game. Yep. Nelson Adoto will check back in. A little extra size for Richmond. All right, now 21 seconds. They don't need to foul. No. Well, they do. 35 seconds on the oh, shot clock. Oh, that's true. Comes. That's true. So they need to defend the inbound. And there you go. There's the foul. Yep. yep. I thought maybe they could let it play out a little bit defensively, but with 19.2 to play, they had to send BCU to the free throw line. Chris Mooney working the officials, thinking there was an elbow there. 66 63 the score. So this is the right guy to foul, though, too. Pete. Daniels is only four of eight from the line, as we mentioned. It's too close to him, Tom. He shoots usually from downtown Richmond. Yeah. He stepped in a little closer to the edge of the Richmond campus to, la la to land that one. And that makes it a two possession game again. ECU is pulled back. From the paint, and Daniels makes one, misses one. 18 seconds to play. Don't need a three now. Oh, Anthony's going to launch a three. It's good. Whoa! Hold on. <laughs> 67, 66. The sold-out crowd lifted from their seats. I guess he likes that spot, Pete. Little guy with a big heart. 17 points. Four for seven from three-point range. Well, now with 13.6 to play, you can foul, and it's still a one-possession game if they make both free throws. Exactly, Tom. So you're Richmond. You want to get a trap, and then you don't get a steal. You got to foul right away. We'd love to foul right now if we could. Brandenburg, 60%. Theus is going to make it. You don't want to foul him. He's their leader. Reddick, you don't want to foul Graham. So yeah, Dan uh, Daniels has made one and missed one tonight. Yeah. So, uh, so he's five of ten now, so but still at fifty percent. Yeah, you want to foul him if you can. But if I'm BCO, I want to get the ball to my leader, my main guy, Theus. Get him the ball. Get Theus the basketball. Get him the ball. Well, he's looking for it. Graham gets it to Daniels, and Brothers fouls him with 12 seconds to play. Well, they did a good job denying Theus yeah. getting the ball. He's their leader. He's the heart and soul of the VCU team, for sure. Darius Theus. So we want to get him the ball. Now, Roy Daniels, one of the best three-point shooters in the country, Tom. Got to make the free throws now. 
Now, if you're VCU, would you go in the paint in case he misses the free, uh, free throw? I'd put a guy in there. Yes, yeah. I would. I'd put one big guy in there. Just tell him, don't foul. Makes the first one, 68-66. Tom, if he makes a second, VCU's up three. I would give a foul. I would not take a chance of them banking a the shot in. Right about half goal, at about four or five seconds. I would foul if I'm VCU. Most coaches don't foul. Shaka will not, but I would foul. Well, he wants a timeout off the two makes by Daniels. Huge free throws for Daniels to make it a three-point ball game. That's so interesting, the debate. There's always that debate. Do you foul? Don't you foul? You would foul. Let's see what VCU would do. Tom, as a head coach now for 20 years, we did it. Every time we were fortunate, it worked out. There's no perfect formula. We did it. And uh, but you gotta practice it. Most coaches don't practice giving a foul. You gotta practice that. You know, zigzag and half court, don't give a foul. So you don't want to miss. You don't want to make it deliberate. So what you gotta do now, I think, if you're VCU, you foul when you get it. Two dribbles over half court, I would give a foul. But so let some time go off the clock. Exactly. 12 seconds is an eternity. Now, because Richmond. They got to get three-point shooter now. Brothers has not made a shot. He's struggling. He's a great three-point shooter. So I want Kendall Anthony to shoot it if possible. All right, maybe Lindsey. Even though Brothers is second best three-point shooter in the country percentage-wise. Huh? Yep. But he's all for life tonight, so you, you don't want him shooting the ball. Yeah, Brothers is uh, two for 12 overall, two for eight from beyond the arc. So it's Lindsey, Anthony, Robbins, Nelson Adota, and Brothers on the floor for Richmond. I would foul if I'm VCU. They will not do it, but I would foul. Ten seconds to play. They're not going to foul. Seven seconds to play. Lindsay looking for Brothers. He lets it fly from the logo. It's good! <laughs> Theus lets it go. It's not going to count. And guess what? For the second straight week, VCU will head into overtime, tied at 69. My, oh, my. Tom, that's why you foul. That's why you foul. I coach better from over here, Tom. <laughs> Don't we all? Shaka Smart has forgotten more than I know, but that's what I would foul. 69-69, the end of regulation. What a finish. Brothers has been cold all night, smoking hot on the last shot. Overtime when we return to the Robin Center. Overtime is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Why do we have overtime? Well, Richmond in the first half was shooting the three quite nicely, but they pulled off until the end of the second half, and Brothers just hit one from the logo, the 100th anniversary logo, to tie this ball game up. You see the two teams' records in overtime this year. VCU won last week against St. Joseph's, Richmond 2-0. Well, this has been everything we expected as far as the pace goes and just the competitiveness of this black and blue classic. A great game, Tom, on CBS Sports Network. A great evening for the Atlantic 10. Well, the two teams will jump center. Dwayne Gladden is the referee, and the tip is controlled by Richmond. Brothers feeling it right now. Oh, boy, is he feeling it. That's a two-point field goal. And he makes it a two-point game. He's streaky, Tom. Got to play him now for VCU now. Boys, VCU, with the drive the ball, both these teams are in the super bonus. Three double-digit scores for Richmond. Four double-digit scores for VCU. Make it four for, for each team. Forgot about Taylor, who's fouled out. And that ball is turned over by Reddick. Tom, um, it's a tough angle to feed the post from way up there at the top of the key. So, bad angle, turnover. 71-69, Richmond on top. Trying to end VCU's 13-game winning streak. Here's Anthony, little hesitation. Off the glass, it's good with the right hand. Theus in the paint, shot no good. 
Last week, Pete, it was VCU that jumped out in overtime against St. Joseph's to take the lead. Tonight, Richmond on a 4-0 run to begin overtime, and they have the lead. I thought VCU would jump out, Tom, because they're deeper, more athletic, and a little bigger, a little stronger, but credit the heart of the Richmond Spiders right now, but it's not over yet. Eternity to go. 15-4 run by Richmond. Graham up top. He'll stop and launch a three. It's good. Well, he can do that. And he was very confident, you could tell by his body language. And he makes it a one-point game. Foul. Boy, Lindsay out of control, but you can count the bucket. How many times have we said that tonight? A lot, Tom. He was fouling him all the way up the court that time. And the officials are getting tired too, Tom. He was above the circle, and he might have been moving at the last second. He was close. Let's see, we got a great crack crew. Well, he was there. Didn't look like Reddick was there. I didn't know if he lifted up at the last moment, but it didn't look like it. Four fouls now on Reddick. Lindsay, four for four from the line tonight. And it's a four point ball game. Three and a half to play in overtime. Tom, I coached the game like this. It was painful. It was painful. Well, how about Reddick just turned it over for a second consecutive time? He dribbled that right off his foot. He's tired, Tom. Big dog is tired. Last week, VCU, after the overtime win against St. Joseph's on Thursday, had a turnaround and play on Saturday against Duquesne. Well, Robbins better get it in. He calls the timeout. Yeah, that is uh, the second to last timeout for Richmond. We talked about last week, VCU against St. Joseph's. You were there. It was an unbelievable environment. And after St. Joseph's came storming back to tie it and force overtime, VCU just took over in this ball game. How about Giovanni Reddick? I mean, this is bam right there. Nice pass by the big dog. Graham to Reddick. Graham from way downtown. Splash. A nice floater in the lane. VCU, as you mentioned, Tom, just took over with that depth, strength, talent to go over in the overtime. St. Joe's had nothing left. Graham had eight of the 12 overtime points for VCU. And our Buffalo Wild Wings game reset. Overtime, of course, is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Possession remains with the Richmond Spiders. One timeout left for Richmond, two for VCU. VCU looked like they were in charge, Tom. Looked like they had the game. I agree but, with you on but, that. But credit Richmond. Big heart. Anthony with a big three and then unbelievable shot at the end of the shot clock by Darian Brothers. So shooting makes up for a multitude of sins. So unbelievable. Seven-point lead for VCU with 42 seconds to go. Got a great coach with three-point shooting, Tom. Right? They fouled the three-point shooter. They fouled Anthony that in the last minute. That was a big minute. play. You don't foul a jump shooter, and you never, ever foul a three-point jump shooter. So that was not a smart play by senior Troy Daniels for VCU. But it's not over yet. We've still got a lot of basketball to play, Tom. And uh, I might have to take a shower right now before the clock starts again. <laughs> well, if you like this ball game, don't forget, coming up right after we're off the air, Wyoming and UNLV. And that should be a good one, too. Yep. Larry Shire's done a great job at Wyoming, very competitive. UNLV has been top 25, top 30-ish team for a good part of the year. Anthony Bennett, one of the best freshmen in the country for UNLV, so it should be a great game on CBS Sports Network. 76-72 here at overtime, 326 to play. Richmond with the ball. Robbins needed to call the timeout. Anthony has been very calm tonight, the way he's played off the bench. 10 rookie of the year. You gotta stay calm now. You can't go crazy. Time and score. You're up four points, you have the ball. By the way, Reddick is on the bench with four personal fouls from VCU. Shot clock under 10. Anthony stops to launch. No good off the front of the rim. And the rebound for Richmond. And the tip was right for VCU, but it just 
it was extended too far away from the basket. It looked like Briante Weber got a piece of that shot by Anthony also. Anthony will stop and launch again. <laughs> 22 points for Kendall Anthony. And the foul will quiet the crowd for the moment. That's the fourth foul on Darian Brothers. All right, Kendall Anthony. I mentioned that he's been coming off the bench the last couple of ball games. I don't know. 22 points on five of nine from beyond the arc. You may want to start him and not take him out the, the entire game. Tom, it's not who starts. It's who's there. Yeah, that's as you right. know, as a coach, a woman's team now, you coach your daughter's <laughs> team, and coach your son's team. You know as a big-time coach. And I was at practice once with you. We had a good time. We had a great time. First free throw is off the line by Guest. And he makes the second one. Reddick will check back in with four fouls. That's good. You need him in the game. He's your best inside player. I think he might be tired, a little hurt in Tom, but he's a terrific player. Okay, this is now a six-point ball game for Richmond. 79-73, 2.25 to play. See the free throws this year with 34. Richmond with 19. I'm Richmond, Tom. I'm running the clock down to the last 10 seconds. I'm having Anthony come off a ball screen. The clock is your best friend now. Don't take a crazy shot. This is wide open. Here's Brothers. Is that a crazy shot? That is a crazy <laughs> shot, my friend. <laughs> That foul will go against Robbins as Reddick pulled down the rebound with 2.04 to play. That's the fourth foul on Robbins. He's driving in. Brothers goes up strong. Kind of pushed off. He's pushed off. Now Reddick didn't foul him. I think that was a bad shot. Now 12 seconds, Tom, left on the shot clock. You gotta be smart. And then you compound that by fouling the VCU play. You can score, possibly score, without the shot clock moving. Well, Reddick cans the first one. If VCU pulls this game out, Pete, Shaka Smart's going to look at the free throws. 27 for 36 from the line. 27 points from the free throw line. Reddick makes one, misses one. Five-point game. It's a two-possession ball game with two minutes to play in overtime. Well, the key now is Richmond's offense. Take care of the ball. Take a good shot at the end of the shot clock with about six, seven seconds to go. You're going to keep your dribble alive, Tom. You never pick up your dribble. Well, looks like they're designing to do that with Lindsay out front. Shot clock at 10. Ooh, he finds Brothers wide open for three. It's good! Three and a half minutes into this ball game, and Richmond has its largest lead of the Knights. 82 to 74. Both guys came on to the dribble at Tom. Both went to Lindsay. They left Brothers alone. Second best percentage three-point shooter in the country. Dials it up. They all went with the ball, Tom. Look at that reaction. 18 points for Brothers on 4 of 10 from beyond the arc. Each team with one timeout left. The possession arrow belongs to Richmond. VCU will have the ball off this timeout. There they go. They're huddling up. They haven't done it as much as we thought they would tonight. But they do this to design the play and kind of calm themselves down and stay focused. Tom, the game is still not over. No, we saw that in the end of the first, second half. Well, VCU, be calm. Try to one or two passes, then have Theus drive the basketball. Tom, pack the basket after a couple of passes. It's a 16-5 run for Richmond. Out of nowhere. Graham against Anthony. Here's Theus, a little push-off, and they're going to call the foul on Theus. What you think of that call, Pete? I thought there was a little push-off. I didn't have a great angle, Tom, over here, but uh, Dwayne Glad's an outstanding official. Yep, you're right, Tom. 
That right hand pushed off a little bit, jumped back. Big call. What a team to play. Eight point game, 82 74. Robbins all by himself and can't finish but gets the board. And now they'll run the clock a little bit. At least that's what you think they would do. Big rebound for Robinson. He missed the layup, but he's wanted enough to get it back out. How about VCU? Do they need to send Richmond to the line here? Yeah, I have to foul now. You're down eight points. Well, Johnson called for the foul. And that'll send Anthony to the free throw line. It's his first personal foul. Chris Mooney, who played under Pete Carrill, who has really grown into becoming one of the, the best young coaches in college basketball. Just looks as cool as a cucumber walking up and down the sidelines. Wow, looks like a businessman, an accountant. <laughs> Madison Avenue in New York City. He's a great coach. We have two great coaches here. Jocka Smart, an unbelievable job taking VCU to the Final Four in 2011, and Chris Mooney took the Spiders to the Sweet 16 in the same year, 2011. Anthony cans the free throw. A 10-point Richmond lead with 49 seconds to play in overtime. Johnson for three, no good. Brothers with the board. I would think that's just about going to do it. I think so, Tom. I think it's history now. It seems appropriate that Kendall Anthony is going to go to the free throw line for Chris Mooney's team. If there was a spark in the second half, it was Anthony, I think, with his threes and his three free throws. And then, of course, Darian Brothers sort of put the stamp on the end of regulation with his long-range three. The big three to put the game into overtime, but you're right, Tom. Kendall Anthony was fabulous. Big-time threes, made three free throws when he got fouled. At the end of the game, in the last minute, he was unbelievable. So uh, it's not over yet, but looks like it could be an unbelievable win for the Spiders. Theus, by the way, is fouled out. Richmond has won seven of the last 12 against a ranked opponent, trying to make it eight of 13 with a victory tonight. Something to be said for that, too. Exactly. Now, tough place to play. Great coach and Chris Mooney and a team with a big heart. Real good fans here at Richmond also, both fans. BCU has great fans, and so does the Richmond Spiders. Anthony with 25 points. He's 6-for-6 six six from the free throw line after that make. Tom, he's not 5'8". He's 5'4". If he stands on a phone book from New York City, he's 5'8". Well, what, whatever guy. he is, he's the biggest man on the floor tonight. You're right, Tom. In so many high. ways. Big high. 30 seconds to play. Weber launches a three. No good. Reddick tips it in the air. Robbins pulls it back out of the air. And Richmond could just run out the last 20 seconds. Shaka Smart just says, let it go. And the black and blue classic will go to the Richmond Spiders. At least part one will in overtime by a final score of 86 to 74. And they are storming the court as the number 19, 19 team in the country suffers its first conference loss. Great basketball game. Both these teams are winners tonight, Tom. Terrific win for Richmond. First win over ranked opponents since March of 2011 when they beat Vanderbilt 69 to 66. Well, this sold-out crowd, some had left. Those that did not enjoyed one heck of a finish. The final score, it's Richmond 86, BCU 74. For Pete Gill and our entire crew, I'm Tom McCarthy. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. Now let's take you out to Las Vegas as Andrew Catalan, Coach Steve Lapis, and Lauren Gardner have the call for Wyoming and UNLV.